Okay, any other questions? No? All right, we're going to uh, continue chapter 5 and uh, Chem Compact G, CCG. This is in the lab manual. And if there are any questions on the stoichiometry stuff in chapter 4, you can ask me and I can go over those problems. But we'll move on to chapter 5 right now. Uh, we're going to be looking at chemical reactions in chapter 5. But so far we've dealt with redox reactions. And what other types of reactions have we encountered? Acid base. Yeah, double replacement, I'm going to call these metathesis. The reason I'm going to call this double replacement metathesis is because they don't always fit the double replacement form. Double replacement forms A, B plus C, D you know, type form. Even though it doesn't fit that form, it's still a, the same type of reaction, so we'll group them all together as metathesis. All right, so we're going to be looking at these three types of reactions in more detail. The uh, first type, the, the redox reaction, you know, some of these can get quite complicated. As you saw, you know, when we're looking at balancing chem the chemical reactions in Chapter 4, some of those were really complicated in the sense that they form many different products, and a lot of redox reactions depend on the conditions that they were run. And so, the first type of redox that we're going to look at is called the skeleton redox. And the skeleton redox you've done in Chem 4, well, basically what it is is you just mix and then see what happens. And so mix and see what happens. You, you should mix carefully. Because redox reactions can be quite violent, you know, depending on what you're reacting. And so an example of this would be, uh, let's say we took some of this, CH3, CH2, OH. What's the name of this? Ethanol? Yeah. That's the ethanol. You know, ethanol, this is the condensed structural formula for ethanol. The molecular formula for ethanol would be C2H6O. This is the molecular formula for ethanol, but this is also the molecular formula for other molecules as well. And so what happens with this particular formula is we have isomers that can occur. What an isomer is, is it's the same formula, but different structure. So that's same as ethanol, but totally different properties. This one's called dimethyl ether. And uh, it has, some properties are similar, like it's quite flammable, but other properties are quite different. And so we, we need to be careful with that. You know, just because we see C2H6O doesn't necessarily mean it's ethanol. What we need is some structural information. That structural information is usually given by the structural formula or Lewis structure or condensed structural formula like this. All right, um, what we could do with the ethanol is we can, you know, well, actually, what can we do with ethanol? And so as far as redox properties go, is ethanol electron rich or electron poor or what is it?
to answer a question like that, what do you do first? Oxidation states. So can you read off the oxidation states for this? Minus three plus one minus two Close. It's hard to do it without the Lewis structure. You know, if you have the Lewis structure, it's a lot easier. You know, so you could just mentally visualize what this is based on. So, is it electron rich or electron poor, or what is it? Rich. Good. Yeah, rich. It's electron rich. Electron rich t tend to be fuels or oxidizers. Fuels. So the ethanol is a good fuel. And so what we need is we need an oxidizer. Oxygen is a good oxidizer, right? Oxygen. Are there any other good oxidizers? Fluorine. Fluorine. Now everybody should recognize fluorine. Why? What's special about fluorine? High, highest electronegativity, but not just for the electronegativity. Everybody should recognize fluorine for something else. What is it? Well, what it is is um, it turns out fluorine has the highest electronegativity, which doesn't always translate to the strongest oxidizer, but fluorine is the strongest oxidizer on this chart. Do you see that? This chart is anchored by two species, fluorine, which is the strongest oxidizer, and lithium. Lithium is the strongest <coughs> reducer. So a lot of people, when they read a chart like this, they want to go, OK, if it's lower in the series or higher in the series, forget that. You know, you can't think like that, because the problem is that sometimes this chart is flipped upside down. And so, you know, if you're out in space and you don't know which way is up or down, then it's irrelevant, right? And so what you need to do is you need to look for other ways of understanding the table. And, you know, I think that people get in this habit because they look on the activity series. Is it high in the activity series or is it low in the activity series? Well, we want to get away from that because the activity series in our book, in our textbook, is flipped upside down. And so the most active is down at the bottom. And the least active is at the top. And so what we do is we memorize two species. What two species do we memorize? Fluorine and lithium. And then we can, no matter which, you know, which direction this table's oriented, we can always figure out you know, what the strongest oxidizer is. What's the strongest oxidizer on the table? Fluorine, no matter if it's at the bottom or at the top of the table. And so um, here, there's fluorine which is a great oxidizer. But you know, when we get a table like this, you know, some people ask me, should I memorize this? You know, in, in Chem 4, I get asked this question all the time. Should I memorize activity series? No, you don't have to memorize activity series. Should you memorize this? No, you don't have to memorize this. But that doesn't mean you should completely ignore it. You know, what you should do is you should take a look at these entries here. And normally, what, what I say is, OK, rote memorization of this table is kind of not very useful. You know, what you want to do is you want to look at the table, look at the table, look at the table, and then what would be good is to memorize some patterns in the table, you know? The reason you should memorize patterns is this. You know, uh, if I were to give you an oxidizer that doesn't occur on the table, you know, some people would say, hey, that's not fair. You know, that oxidizer wasn't on the table. Well, yeah, it wasn't on the table, but if you knew something about the patterns of reactivity, then you could have placed it w at least, you know, relatively where it should belong. And so when we're given a table like this, you know, we just, it's a lot of information, too much information. In fact, in science, there's, there's something called data reduction and analysis. Have you ever heard the term data reduction? 
data reduction is sometimes you're, you're, you have like 50, 60 pages worth of data. 50 or 60 pages worth of data, what are you going to do with all that data? It's too much data, right? Too many numbers, too much stuff. And so what you do is you try to reduce that data by looking for patterns. And so this is, that's a lot of data here. You know, what is there, 60 entries there? That's too, man, too much, too much stuff. And so what do you do? Rather than just memorize it, you know, does anybody memorize 60 pages worth of numbers? No. And, but, you know, what you should n memorize is if there's some kind of pattern in those numbers. Well, the same thing here. We look for patterns. So, you know, fluorine, take a look. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, those are the, the halogens, right? Those are strong oxidizers. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. What else do you see? Well, let's take a look at some of these. And this type of stuff does take time. I mean, it's not like you just look at it and, and it's obvious. Sometimes it takes some time. But the, the first step is just to look the data over and over and over. When you look at it over and over and over, then you start to see certain things. You know? and so fluorine, hydrogen peroxide. What's this next one here? Permanganate. What's this? Cr2072 minus. Dichromate. You know, there's, there's something that, that I find funny about tables. A lot of tables, if there's too much information, people will totally ignore it. And so sometimes on an on exam, I give this table like this. Not this one, but a smaller version of it. And this is how far people ignore tables. I give this table on exam and I ask them, what is the formula for dichromate? blank. Three hour test. He couldn't figure it out. And I'm thinking, gosh, it's right there on the table and I gave them the table. Why couldn't they figure it out? And it's this thing about the tables, you know, a lot of people see a table like that and it's, you know, forget it. Too much information. Or this happens a lot in Chem 4, not in Chem 1A. I give them this table because I, I do redox in Chem 4 too. Give them this table and ask them, okay, and another problem, you know, sodium fluoride, what's the formula? And they write F with a two minus charge. And I go, you know, F with a two minus? How, how do they get that? I have no idea, you know? And so, you, you sh yeah, you don't have to memorize it. Even if you don't have to memorize it, that doesn't mean you should ignore it. And don't ignore this table because there's a lot of stuff. Do you see any other patterns in there? There's something that's kind of odd, like here, hydrogen peroxide with acid, H+, permanganate with acid, dichromate with acid, oxygen with acid, nitrate with acid, H+. You see H+, occurs there. Do you see that pattern? OK, but H+, occurs there, but nothing happens with the oxidation state, because this is plus 1 over here. You know, over here, it's plus 1 also. And so H+, doesn't participate in the redox. And that's true. H plus does not participate in the redox. And this is a redox chart. And so why is H plus there? And so do you see what, what all those species with H plus have in common? There's two things they all have in common. What is it? Yes. They all form water on the left. And so if we don't have hydrogen over here, we aren't going to form water, right? And the other thing is, you know, the oxidizer all contains oxygen atoms. You see that? And so somehow we're combining the oxygens with the hydrogens to form water going this way, backwards. Does everybody see that? That's the pattern. And so let's use a different oxidizer. Rather than oxygen, I want to use something else. Oh, you know what? If I used oxygen, did, you, did somebody notice something weird? Also, when you start looking at charts like this, this is what you want to find weird stuff. You want to find the weird stuff before the test, not during the test. And so look at oxygen. 
here. Oxygen is pretty powerful, right? Not so far from chlorine. But look up there, two thirds of the way up. What occurs there? You see that oxygen occurs twice. What do you want to find out about this stuff? The night before the exam, or you know, well in advance of the exam. Well, the night before is better than never. And so, you know, the night before, during the test. During the test, it's too late. And so, um, what do you see about the two oxygens? Well, obviously, one of the oxygens is stronger. So, what makes one oxygen a stronger oxidizer than another oxygen? Does anybody see it? What would cause one oxygen to be stronger than another oxygen? They're both oxygen, O2. Shouldn't they be exactly the same? They have this exact same electronegativity. They're both highly electronegative. Electronegativity is just part of the story, though, up there. You know, because if, if it was based solely on electronegativity, then fluorine's the most, and then oxygen is the next most electronegative element. But it looks as if other things, like chlorine, beats, off, beats it. So does somebody see... What makes one oxygen stronger than the other? The, no, the oxidation states are exactly the same. Which one? The oxygen lowered down that's uh, more reactive is O2 minus the charge. And then one well, oxygen is a zero, and oxygen is a zero. So you have to be more specific. Both oxygens have a zero oxidation state, correct? This one's right now, because this one looks just like this one. This one's more specific than this one. 